Hello everyone, welcome to another session of CFA Level 2. Today we will be starting with the last remaining reading of fixed income which is credit default swaps. Now CDS as an instrument you have done some introductory part of it from CFA Level 1 itself. So we will be building on top of that. Now CDS let me be very clear this is a very small reading and relatively a very easy basic reading. Now this reading of credit default swaps it builds upon the very basic introductory material that you had at level 1 about CDS and as such for a level 2 reading it is relatively easy. So it's not going into too much details and technicalities of how CDS work, how the valuation and everything is going to be done exactly. Rather it is tackling all of these questions still in a very basic manner. So you will have a lot of new information but it's not going to be a tricky reading at all. So let's start with the first portion which is going to be the introduction itself. Now credit default swap despite the name having swaps in it, it's not actually a derivative instrument like or traditional interest rate swaps or currency rate swaps are. Rather CDS works very similar to how an insurance contract works. So you have various parties involved. So you have what is known as a protection buyer. Who is buying the CDS and the other party in the transaction is known as protection seller who is selling the protection who is selling the CDS. So seller of the CDS, buyer of the CDS. The buyer of the CDS is the person who is exposed to some great risk but he wants to remove his exposure to that great risk. So just like let's say I have a car. There is a chance that I might get involved in an accident which might damage the car and I might have to bear those damages, bear those losses. So there is a risk involved. Now in order to take that risk away from me, what I do is I go and buy a car insurance. That way if in case an accident happens and the car gets damaged, the insurance company will bear all the losses and as such I will not be exposed to risk. So that is CDS. Now just like I take an insurance uh, policy for my car, I have to pay premium to the insurance company. Similarly, the protection buyer will have to pay a premium. This premium is called CDS spread. So CDS spread is basically what premium the protection buyer should pay to the protection seller in order to purchase the CDS in order to have his risk taken away from him. So as such this is the structure of the CDS and this is working exactly same as how your regular insurance contract works. There is one major difference that separates insurance contract and CDS and we will look at that in some of the coming topics we will discuss that in this session itself. So I will wait that discussion for now because it will get a lot confusing if I take up right away. So for now just keep the simple understanding that this is how your CDS contract works. Now normally in case of CDS the payments are in two different portions. One is the protection side of things where the protection buyer is paying the premium to the protection seller. The other payment so this would be the payment going this way and the other payment would be in case of a claim. The claim would be that whatever security I bought the CDS on, whatever security I bought this sort of insurance on, if that company has some sort of a credit event, credit default, in that case whatever losses I have on that security, those would be covered by the protection seller. So think of it again from the insurance perspective. If I have an accident, I've been paying premium throughout the year I paid the premium at the start of the year so one payment was already made. Now during the year if I have an accident in my car and there are some damages I can claim them from the protection seller and he will give me that money to reimburse my losses. So that's the same thing. One side of payments is the premium going from the protection buyer CDS buyer to CDS seller and the other is the claim in case a credit event happens and that claim is triggered. Now this claim it is possible it doesn't materialize at all. If there is no credit event, the CDS will never materialize. The same way if there is no damage to the car, I might have paid premium. So this premium is certain but that claim depends on happening of an event. If that event doesn't happen, this leg of payment may or may not materialize ever. 
Now, there are a few more technicalities we need to be aware of. Firstly, claim. We are talking about credit events. What could be the possible credit events that could trigger this claim? So, there are various events that are called credit events that could signal some sort of credit deferred. So, you have firstly the most common one bankruptcy. Bankruptcy happens when the company runs out of money to pay for all of its obligations. That is when we call the company as going bankrupt. They don't have anything left to settle their obligations. The other case could be just a failure to pay. So normally, normally a credit event is started by missing on one payment. You don't just have a company that has been paying interest or has been operating fine till the last month all of a sudden going bankrupt. Rather, they sort of default on a first payment. Maybe a company took a loan and they aren't able to pay one installment. That would start the initiation of some sort of credit decline in the company. So your credit events won't just be liquidation and bankruptcy. It could also be as small as just a failure to settle an obligation that would make a company as a credit defaulter. Aside from this, you also have restructuring. So sometimes CDS can also have a claim in case of restructuring where company is trying to restructure its debt and equity and as such it drastically changes the exposure of equity and debt class of investors. So as such you can also have CDS which cover the change of your risk profile in case of some sort of corporate restructuring that the company might go through. So these are some of the events which could trigger the claim depending upon what exactly is agreed between the two parties at the start of the contract. Now, aside from this, if you remember from level 1 derivatives, this chapter is part of fixed income, but it will often relate to derivatives. In derivatives, we had two kinds of concepts at level 1. You could have a physical delivery and you have a cash settlement. Same can happen here as well. So, the actual settlement, this claim part of transaction, this can be done in two ways. One is physical, where the buyer... And seller. Seller will pay the par value of the bond. So let's say I am the buyer, I had a bond whose par is $100 and the company committed a credit default due to which the value of this bond in the market is only worth $20. So in this particular case where we have physical delivery, the CDS seller, the person, the insurance company, for simplicity I am just going to call this insurance company but keep in mind it's a CDS seller. He will pay me the entire $100 but in return, I have to give him the bond, which is trading at $20. So he'll pay me par, but I have to surrender the asset to the protection seller. That is known as physical settlement. Then you have cash settlement, where again you have buyer and you have seller. But in this case, if the claim materializes, seller will directly pay me just $80. The difference between the par and the 20 and I will continue to hold the bond which is worth $20 with me because effectively seller is saying you already have a bond that you can sell in the market for $20. So effectively out of the 100 that you were exposed to, you haven't lost the 20. 20 is still there with you. Your loss is only 80. So in this case, the seller is only covering your loss portion. So you can have both sort of cases that can exist. Most of the calculations for your exam purposes will focus on cash settlement. I hope all of that makes sense. One last thing, there is also an alternate way of looking at the buyer and the seller. So right now we have been talking about person who is buying CDS, who is buying the insurance contract, who needs protection. But you can also look at them from the risk perspective. The person who is buying the insurance contract is actually selling the risk. So he is short on risk. He is selling the risk. He is giving away the risk. And the person who is selling the insurance contract, the insurance company, that company is purchasing the risk. So we can often look at them as a party, short risk and long risk. So this is a terminology that is used in your curriculum and in your other study materials. So I just wanted to clarify it because at times students are confused that how can a buyer be a short party? The thing is, 
over here the buyer is for the insurance contract but the short is terminology used when we talk about in terms of uh, context of risk so when we talk about risk he becomes a party which is selling the risk and when we talk about just the insurance contract he is buying the insurance contract so i hope the introduction part is clear let's look at some of the different cbs contracts that we can have and how the settlement happens in terms of how much dollar value of settlement will happen let's do some examples for that 